You should be all right. Bryce Quarter with the 08 Report. In New Year, new basketball. We've got Olentangy Orange and Westerville North, the 6-0. Olentangy Orange, the 6-1. Westerville North Warriors battling for outright control of the Ohio Capital Conference going into the new year. All the momentum going into it. Joe Balo joining me, legendary Hall of Fame coach. We've got the pregame show coming up next. better watch out. It's the year-end big event at Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Dublin. During the wrap-up the year sales event, get a new Ram 1500 up to 15000 off MSRP. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Crown's year-end big event is here for a limited time. Santa Claus is coming <laughs> to Crown. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Now let's take a look at the OH Report pregame show presented by the OH Report, always live and free. Bryce Coder joining me tonight is Joe Balo, legendary coach from around the area and executive director of the Ohio Coach Association. Did yes, currently the executive director to take care of all of our awards. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and jump right into this pregame show. So the Olentangy Orange Pioneers having a fantastic season coached by Anthony Kalo. They're 6-0 on the season, 2-0 in the conference. They've outscored their opponents 376 to 214. And I mean, so far this year, looking at everything they've been able to do, I mean, they've just blown away every team that they've faced, it seems like. You know, they're district champions from a year ago, and they've really built on, uh, you know, just coming back and being an extremely strong basketball team and have set themselves to be one of the better teams here in the Central Ohio area. Talk about that culture of winning. Now let's take a look at our player spotlight. It's Dylan Joy, the senior. He had three threes against Whetstone, averaging 13.2 points per game and 4.4 assist points per game. 
He's a six foot shooting guard senior and really been playing all around the state of Ohio, playing AAU, gotten some attention as well. Very skilled guard. Yeah, I mean, guard play in these games is going to be really important, and that's that's also going to be a strength of Lesterville North. So it's going to be interesting to see this, this matchup between different divisions as to how the guard play plays out tonight. We will take a look at the Olin Kanji Orange keys to victory tonight. It's going to be destroy the press. We see how strong time and time again the press is for Westerville North. They love to put it on early, try to exhaust their opponents, get their opponents out of their game plan. But if they can get the ball across midcourt quickly, they can really have a lot of excess on those fast break layups. And then at that pace, try and create your own pressure. Try and create opportunities for yourself on the defensive end to push yourself forward and grab that ball for yourself. Yeah, I think it's important that uh, um, you know, they're going to try to attack that pressure. You know, whether you're going to attack it to finish or you're going to look to you know, push, pull it out and set up your offense. So that will kind of be a key tonight as uh, Orange attacks uh, Westerville's north pressure. Now let's take a look at our home team spotlight. Westerville North Warriors. They're six and one on the season, three and one in the Ohio Capital Conference. Last game against Canal Winchester, which we covered, they had an 85 to 35 victory with 28 forced turnovers, 13 three pointers, and shooting 67 percent from the field. And coming into a big game like this, where you know you're going to have a tough opponent, do you view this as a, a strength or a weakness coming into this game? Is playing a team that's not necessarily as skilled as you are? Well. You know, you know, their only loss is, is to a really good Delaware Hayes team. Um, so sometimes over the Christmas holidays, you really don't know how your kids are going to respond. But I think if you're Westerville North, look at the margin of victory they had versus Canal Winchester. It wasn't a game that they just came in and felt like, hey, we're just going to win this, you know, by stepping on the floor. They came out and really dominated. So I think if you're, if you're a coach truly, you're really looking at, hey, you know, we're, we're coming into this game on a pretty good high. Um, and we're really going to kind of see what time, type of team we are tonight. Now let's take a look at our home player spotlight. And, of course, it's Vari Adams, a 6'6", senior center. He was our MVP player of the game last time. He had 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 dunks against Canal Winchester. Really dominating force inside. And we've seen him be able to stretch the floor for them. They're so good trying to penetrate on the drive. But he's so powerful on the boards and putting up those easy baskets. Well, it's really nice when you have the guards that Westerville North has they can have the confidence that they can really, really pressure the basketball. And if they happen to get beat off the dribble, they got a guy like Adams inside that's really going to be able to protect the rim. Um, so that adds even more to the strength defensively for Westerville North tonight. Now let's take a look at Westerville North's keys to victory for the night. They want to catch Orange out early, try to establish an early lead, maybe try and catch them guessing early on. So you can try to establish it, maybe catch them off guard, go into the locker room, and you really don't know what kind of conversation they're having. You make your adjustments and accelerate into the second half. You want to be patient for opportunities. And, you know, it's something that we talked about last time on the broadcast is how patient Westerville North can be, but at times they can also be impatient. They can really jump towards steals when they shouldn't be, or they try to push the ball or make that extra pass too quickly, and it comes back to bite them. You know, that's when a team pressures like Westerville North does, you know, that's that's the difficulty as a coach. You try to find that balance um, because you really want them to be aggressive, but also there's times when you need to be able to make that extra pass um, or, or make that better decision with the basketball. Um, and so with a team like Orange coming in here today, uh, that's going to be a key as to how well they're going to play tonight. Great point. And going through our player intros here, getting a look at Westerville North as they make their way onto the court. Ari Adams, our MVP last game, that dominant interior presence. Ty Perkins, a sleek and savvy guard. MC Walker have been known to provide more than enough support for this team. Ian Robinson, the lanky flex player. Great shooter, but great on the inside as well. Now 
now both teams making their way onto the court. And a lot of anticipation around this game, control for the OCC. If Olentangy uh, Orange wins, they retain that outright control, but things get a little bit shaky if Westerville North wins in this conference. Well, this is a great game to have over the holidays, and I think, you know, you have both teams that are really excited. I'm sure both coaches are really excited to see kind of where their teams stand as we head into the new year. Now we are underway. A quick hit for Orange with a missed layup. Keeps us at zero. You know, Westerville North going with a four out, one in look. Looking to really drive gaps um, and trying to isolate their big man inside. Great box out there. Looks like Keegan Nup with the rebound. Working the ball around, looking for an opening. And Orange with a little bit more of a five out look. Although the, the big guy, Nolan Fettick, inside, but he likes to step out a little bit more to the perimeter, so they're trying to spread Westerville North out a little bit. And there's the quickness of their guards getting deflection in the passing lane um, by number 21, uh, Ian Robinson. Very athletic, and he's got a little bit of height, a little bit of size to him, but he's so quick around the court to get to those steals. Again, a lot of pressure on the basketball by Westerville North. Really looking to try to be active in passing lanes and trying to spread Orange out offensively. Bari Adams with his first rebound of the night. Coming with some high ball screen action with Adams looking for that roll inside. And that's going to be the difficulty that Orange is going to face tonight, is going to be able to try, can they keep penetration out of the lane without having to help? There you saw the help come off, and now they're able to step up and shoot an open three. Pass out to the corner. Three ball is aired from Trayton Schroeder. Quick pressure up front. Warriors in the corner of their own. Off right iron hits that belt. And no basket. Now with the dead ball situation here, you're going to get to see Westerville North pick up with their man-to-man -man full court pressure here and see how well Orange is able to handle it. 5.36 into the first quarter. Already trying to exhaust this Orange team. Pioneers find some penetration. Nice Zero move. Steps, steps back around, two points. It was Devin Brown. I mean, that's a, that's a great post move. Got into the lane, got deep. Two-foot jump stop, used his pivot foot really well to do a little up and under move and finish at the rim. Now a drive into the corner. It's good for Perkins. Again, that ability that North shows of being able to drive the ball into the lane, draw help, and pitch it to an open shooter in the corner. And a miscommunication from the Pioneers leads to a turnover. Westerville North leading by four inside of five minutes now. Blocked by Devin Brown, a huge rejection on Ian Robinson, but Robinson comes behind from the straight block. Perkins, a three, it's good! Ty Perkins with six. And the drive finds the back door, fades away on the post shot. Hard fought, two points. 
But you can see Western of North looking to be quick off of that made shot, got the ball at the four quickly, able to draw a foul in transition. Now you get to these these situations here in the game, baseline out of bounds in it, in a tightly contested game, which we expect to be like this, can be very, really, really key. Um, stepped up there, missed a three off the inbounds play. Rims out the back iron. And we see the skills of this Westerville North yes. team. How does their play or their setup or their strategy feed into their strengths? Well, just their ability. They, they've got they've got four guys on the perimeter that can really attack the lane. So so they're really going to test the ability of Orange being able to guard that one on one. And if they can and they draw help, you've already seen their ability to to pitch it to open shooters on the perimeter. Devin Brown is down underneath the basket. Looks like he came down hard on the ankle and just sprained it. He's got weight on it. It looks like he's trying to nurse that back to health as quickly as possible. Yeah, this that that could be a big, big key in tonight's game right there. Is uh, you know how how bad did he roll that, and if they're he's able to walk it off, or if they're going to be able to tape it up and see, but. Uh, that could be a big difference maker in tonight's game. And we've seen his presence already, how powerful yes. inside, but quick too, very savvy yeah. to get the ball in the basket. Yeah, his ability to score in the post is a is a big key for Orange. Robinson in the corner, drives baseline, looks for the back door. Adams throws it out, trapped in the corner. Throws it off the legs of Carson Cutler. I mean, North, they just run that, that little bit of a weave, and then their guards they, their guards try to pick, a, pick an opportunity where, you know, they can just really attack the basket and drive the ball either to finish. But in most cases right now, the drive has been to draw help and pitch it to an open shooter. 3.15 left here in this first quarter. The top of the key is Ronald Jackson. Shot at the elbow, rolls around and bounces out. Quick move. And MC Walker just gets under him. So Orange is going to have the ball baseline out of bounds. Looks, looks like they're setting up in a box set. So possibly some screen the screener action here. Trying to get a quick look right back to the shooter. Orange's second turnover of the night. Starting to hear that student section over there making themselves known. Perkins. Back to the top of the key, Micah Young. Right iron, no good. I mean, overall here to start the game, uh, Orange doing a pretty good job of just limiting Westerville North to one shot. Uh, you know, the problem is North has come out and, and made three threes here to start the game. hot on the three-point front tonight. As a coach, are you, you know, banking on riding that wave through? Are you looking to mix it up? Or are you trying to not break what's not broken? Well, I mean, the, the threes they've taken have all been good threes. So so as a coach for North, you, you, you like that. If, if you're an Orange's side, you're going to probably try to maybe close out a little bit harder and see if you can force them to maybe have to put the ball on the floor. Um, to push him off that spot. Now Perkins has some trouble with it. Spin move. They say it's a travel. Turnover Warriors. First turnover of the night for the Warriors. But you can see defensively, 
Orange's perimeter players are just trying to keep the ball in front of them and keep them out of the lane so they don't have to help a lot uh, off of the basketball. Run a little bit of a scissor cut off the high post. And now the big man goes to work inside. Great look. Keegan Nup. I mean, Nup, again, really good post move. Gets to the lane, two foot jump stop. Really does a nice job of working off of his pivot foot. Nice driving dish. Beautiful job of controlling that defender. Great pass. Second. Beautiful outdoor back door though. Orange gets it right back. Great pass there by Schroeder. Left-handed pass off the dribble. Drive Big offensive the rebound. Good. Noah Fedlack. Nolan Fedak. And that's what you like when a guy comes off the bench is to immediately give you some energy and get into the offensive glass is one way especially a big guy can, can give energy to his team. Third turnover. Elijah, no I'm sorry, Levi Davis and Devin Brown. Good, good news here for, the, for Orange. Devin Brown's back in the basketball game so he either walked that off or, or went and got a quick tape job. Uh, doesn't look to see that he's hobbling on it at all. Inside of 40 seconds left in this quarter. A shot from the wing from Robinson. Another offensive Good rebound. Rebound offensively by Ronald Jackson. Fast break for Orange. Tied up in front of the basket. Pass a bit late. Defense able to get back. You know, Orange looking to take advantage of an opportunity, you know, in transition, but a great job of sprinting back defensively by Westerville North. So we often talk about the Warriors' pace, but the Pioneers coming back with a bit of pace of their own, it looks like. See, Brown's going to work here again. He is really good in the lane, really good. Good shot. Wow. Drills it, Ty Perkins before the buzzer. That brings an end to the first quarter. The Warriors leading this one 16 to 12. out it's the year-end big event at crown chrysler dodge jeep ram of dublin during the wrap up the year sales event get a new ram 1500 up to 15,000 off msrp you better not pout i'm telling you why crown's year-end big event is here for a limited time santa claus is coming <laughs> to crown
watch out. It's the year-end big event at Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Dublin. During the wrap-up the year sales event, get a new Ram 1500 up to 15000 off MSRP. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Crown's year-end big event is here for a limited time. Santa Claus is coming <laughs> to Crown. We guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game.
Take a look at this halftime report presented by the OH Report. Olentangy Orange leading 31 to 25 over Westerville North. Let's take a look at the stats from the half. Olentangy Orange with 11 field goals, two three-pointers, 14 rebounds, three turnovers, four fouls, and three free throws. Really, the interior has been their bread and butter tonight. Um, you know, we saw Westerville North get off to that quick three-point game early on, two or three quick threes in the first quarter, but it's really been the pioneers penetrating. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing, Westerville North had a, a hot start, and to kind of counterbalance that, you didn't see panic uh, at all by Orange. They, they used their, their post play inside to kind of settle themselves down, and then you saw in the second quarter, they made two really big threes, you know, to stretch the lead out a little bit. And then you saw a little bit of a run at the end of the half by Westerville North um, to get kind of back, you know, I think it was maybe a 10-point game. I mean, they've got it back to six here to start the third quarter. And Westerville North, uh, two or six field goals, four three-pointers, nine rebounds, three turnovers, four fouls, one free throw. And it's been a pretty clean game so far. That's something we were talking about at the break is both sides they're being allowed to play and both sides not necessarily turning over the ball a lot it's been clean basketball but coming down to those shots falling yeah I mean uh you know both teams have, have played physical but but have played physical without fouling I think the officials have really done a nice job of, of you know just keeping the game in control but uh you know as this game gets tighter in the second half uh it's going to probably even get a little bit more physical so uh the start of this third quarter is, is, is important uh you know, kind of being in the coaching profession for a long time, you you many times talk about the first three minutes of the game being important and then the first three minutes of the second half. So uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, Coach Kalos probably saying, hey, let, let's take this six-point lead and see if we can get it to double digits. And if you're on the other side, uh, Westerville North, their coaching staff's telling them, hey, let's, let's, get a, let's, get, let's, I, let's get a score, I think, I think it's, uh, well, let's get a stop because they're going to be on defense. Let's get a stop, a score, and a stop. Um, so now we have it to four with the ball in our hands. So uh, these first couple possessions are going to be kind of crucial to see how this game starts here in the second half. So we'll see what adjustments take place as we begin the third quarter. Devin Brown, ball poked out, recovers it some contact, puts it up, no good, but gets the rebound, puts it back, thinks about helping up Robinson, but has to get back on defense. You know, there we call it, we talked about the physical nature of the game. Brown draws some contact there. Uh, defender tries to take a charge, not able to, but he has the, the stick-to-itiveness 
to stay with it, grab an offensive rebound, and get a putback. Robinson cr cuts across the free throw line, but a foul is called. I mean, the one thing that Westerville North has not been able to do um, is put the ball inside Javari Adams. Uh, we mentioned at the beginning of the pregame that he had a really good game the last time out. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he gets a few more touches here in the second half. So right now it goes right to him into the post. Good job of deflection the basketball there and forcing a turnover. Forcing the turnover, a floater from the free throw line recovered by Adams. So a presence on the boards, but not so much in terms of points. And, you know, Orange doesn't necessarily have that size advantage as Ty Perkins puts in an easy two. So what are they doing to keep Vari Adams out? Well, you know, they just they just really haven't looked at him. Uh, uh, you know, they, they, they kind of go with a four-out one in offense, and they're looking to try to get the ball into the lane. Um, and Orange has not had to draw, you know, have, have not, the, the help hasn't had to come off of that dribble. Um, so they've done a pretty good job of just being able to control uh, him defensively because the post guy's not stepping up and helping, um, and they're not able to dish it to him at all on the penetration. So Levi Davis comes to the line, six-foot sophomore. First one rolls out. Carson Cutler checking in for the Pioneers. Tyson Perkins also checking in. That free throw is good. Brings the lead to seven. And a charge is called MC Walker. So in that situation, North does, does beat the initial offender with the drive, but the help side defense along the baseline does a great job of rotating and being able to take a charge. There's this pressure. First time we've really seen Westerville North Looking to trap the basketball and they force a turnover. Young, the hook shot. Struggling to get the ball in the basket. But Keegan Nup flying in with the right-handed layup around the defender. And the three. Great box out. That one tipped. Oh, a huge collision. Tyson Perkins slow to get up, but Ty Perkins bangs in a three from the corner. That was quite a sequence there. A, a turnover, another turnover, then a three. Now, it looks like Norse amping up their pressure on the basketball a little bit more here in the half court. I mean, where Orange has been good to handle this, they've just been patient and then been able to get that mismatch in the post. And here's that mismatch with Devin Brown getting to the lane. Into the corner, three ball. Offensive rebound and a putback. A putback from Keegan Nup. Fast break, ball offline, allows the defense to catch up. But Micah Young. Floats in a two. From the corner. No good. And a beautiful pass. No look. MC Walker one on one with the basket. Two points. That's, a, that's a, just a tremendous play to get to the defensive rebound and the ability just to flick it out to a teammate running the floor. And a three from Brown. Tough shot, but a big offensive rebound. Count the basket. 
and he will go to the line for one. If you're Coach Truesley, you, you had to be happy. You forced Brown to take a tough contested three, but you're really disappointed that you haven't, you don't keep him off the offensive glass. Now Davis into double digits, him and Brown both. You know, one of the stats you look at typically when a game's over is who wins the rebounding battle and then who gets to the free throw more often. And right now, Orange is doing that. And a timeout called by North after that mid-range basket. I mean, Orange with three offensive rebounds here in the second half, and I think two of them led to, to baskets. Um, and currently, you know, they're, they're five of, of, excuse me, five of eight from the free throw, free throw line for the game. Uh, Westerville North only one of two. Um, so usually in a big basketball game, a tightly contested game, the, the team that has the ability to get to the free throw line and make free throws is the team that's going to win. And right now that team is orange. Sponsorship opportunities available for the OH Report. If you would like to have your business or organization featured on the OH Report, you can call or text Brian Skaronsky, our fearless owner and leader, at 970-629-0006. We will get you set up. A long history of supporting schools and the athletics and the students that go to them. Full court press is on. Brown the spin move, short arms it a bit. Perhaps a bit of contact, steps on the line. Orange retains possession. I mean the last last couple times that Brown has shot it. Uh, Westfield North has done a good job of making take a tough shot, but the thing they haven't been able to do is finish the possession and grab the defensive rebound. You would think you have that size, but this one a huge turnover. Yep, on an inbounds Long play. Easy bucket. Third turnover of the half for Orange. Ball poked away. the corner, finds the baseline. Dylan Joy gets fouled. He'll go to the line for two. No, under the basket. Yeah, he'll keep I did, it. He, he wasn't in the shooting motion, so baseline out of bounds. But last time, Westerville North did a great job defending and forced a turnover on this baseline out of bounds. We said, Oranges run everything out of a box set. They've shown different things. Favorite thing seems to be that they love to take the guy at the opposite block and just curl him off this post, kind of seal this post. So entry goes here to Brown at the top. And this is what they've really tried to do here in the second half Another is do a foul. little bit better job of isolating him at the top of the key and just kind of clearing everybody out and letting him go to work. Seeing that experience you have, I mean, analyzing yeah. out-of-bounds <laughs> plays. I mean, when, when I played, it was one of those things. You go to the out-of-bounds plays and practice, it's like, man, can we just get this over with? Can we play some real basketball? But Well, one of the things in, in coaching for 30-some for years, uh, y y you learn that those those really are special situations. And your ability to either to score on those or your ability to defend other teams out of bounds plays many times is a big difference in who wins a basketball game. So that's interesting. You don't see it as like a play through kind of play. You see it as uh, like a real opportunity. Yeah, it's a real opportunity, basketball. especially in a tight basketball game. You know, if you can if you can get a basket, an easy basket off of a baseline out of bounds play, uh, that that's that can be a huge momentum swing in the game of basketball. The foul.
close, very tight game now. Has been all game, but both sides pulling away for a minute or so. And then it equaling back out. Nice pass. Nice pass. Whoa. Nolan Fedak. Again, the penetration by the guard forced the post defender to help up just a little bit. And their guards do a great job of seeing, seeing the floor. Tied up and a foul is called. The crowd is into it. It's interesting to see where previously it wasn't really working for Vari Adams on the inside, but Nolan Fedak has had a lot of luck just by being in the right yeah. place. You know, he, he's made a couple nice cuts. He made a, I think we made a, a mention in the first half. Uh, one of his teammates was kind of bundled up against pressure, and he made a simple cut along the baseline underneath the basket. I uh, was able to score an easy basket there also. Fifth foul, fifth foul on Westerville North, so Orange is going to the line shooting two free throws for the rest of the quarter. Now a foul along that baseline. We're talking about in the first half yep. how they were letting them play a little bit, but now seemingly a little bit more conscious of well, the contact that's happening. Hey, but, but the thing you see a little bit more here in the second half is defenders putting their hands, hands on offensive players. And any time that starts to happen, officials are going to start blowing the whistle a lot more. Do you think that's just trying to keep the guy in front, or do you think that's yeah, exhaustion? I mean, or? You, you know, uh, you know, for the, the quickness of Westerville North, it's hard to handle. Um, and so you have a tendency, if you're a defender, the way to slow them down is if you can put your hands on their hips and kind of control them a little bit. Uh, but most, most good officials, when they see that, are not going to allow that. So five fouls in the quarter for the Warriors, three. Here's this little curl off, of, off the post. And then they're going to throw it to Brown. Right back to the inbounder for a three. Another offensive rebound. The foul inside. I think it was in the act of shooting, so Elias Apaya will go to the line. Devin Brown with 15, and Tyson Perkins with 16 are the leading scorers in the game. Ty Perkins, I'm sorry. First free throw of Falls. As does the second. Pioneers extend their lead to so four. The, so the Pioneers have been to the line nine times this quarter. Westerville North has not been to the line at all. Pioneers coming out with some pressure of their own. Tyson Perkins in the corner. Fedak with an eight-footer. You know, he's just doing a nice job of just, you know, making a, a short little cut into the lane, and his teammates have done a nice job of being able to find him. Forced to turn over there, but they turn it right back over, possibly. Nope. Great hustle by Fedak. Fedak again. Fedak has ten. Beautiful effort. Tyson Perkins steps aside. Pass. Nice Young shot fake. From eight. Front iron. Rebound. Spin move. Block. Devin Brown with the rejection. I mean, nice job there of using the shot fake to get to the lane. Just shot that eight footer just a little bit short. Perkins looking for an option. Starting to run out of time, but able to get it off. Ronald Jackson with the ball. Son of former Ohio State quarterback Stanley Jackson. A three from Perkins, just a bit flat and rolls out. 30 seconds left in this quarter. Like a pump fake layup. Tyson Perkins throws it over the board. And now the Pioneers on a three-on-one fast break. Off the backboard, the putback. Now a timeout. I think he turned it over. 
Ooh, a turnover, I'm sorry. Another look at that put back. Point seven left here in this third quarter. So, so this could be a really big possession. Four point game, Orange has the ball, baseline out of bounds with 13 seconds, plus they're gonna get possession of the ball to start the fourth quarter. And so who do they gonna look like they're gonna go to? Devin Brown, whoop, out top. Oh, great cut, great cut Devin by Brown. Brown. Had a good look, but it bounced out. Now with four seconds left, the Warriors looking for a shot, perhaps a bit premature. And that rolls out. So going into the fourth quarter, Olentangy Orange Pioneers leading this one over the Westerville North Warriors, 46 to 42. We'll have fourth quarter action coming up next, live and free on the OH Report. Better watch out. It's the year-end big event at Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Dublin. During the wrap-up the year sales event, get a new Ram 1500 up to 15,000 off MSRP. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Crown's year-end big event is here for a limited time. Santa Claus is coming <laughs> to Crown. I guess we had a, had a mistake in there. I thought it was going to be orange ball coming out the fourth, but it's uh, it's uh, Westerville Norse basketball. So, you know, as a coach, you're coming in going, hey, let's get a score right here, a stop and a score, and we're tied up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they go to here to start the fourth quarter. Great job by Triton Schroeder to get out on that passing lane, go at it with both hands. Hi Perkins, working on Schroeder. To Tyson Perkins. Layup, but foul they say. Tyson Perkins will go to the free throw line. He has three points on the night. This will be, this will be the first time here in the second half that North is going to get to the free throw line. Really, so really struggling to kind of get that ball inside. Yeah. First one rolls out for Perkins. I mean, this will be only North's fourth free, free throw attempt for the basketball game, whereas I believe Orange has gone to the line 14 times, and you, they don't convert. Mavari Adams, our spotlight player, held to only two points on the night so far. Great pass and a great, great shot fake. And a turnover. Now a turnover. Pioneers will slow it down. Still pushing the pace. Offensive tip doesn't go. Finger roll. So heavily contested game as a coach and a reach in foul by Vari Adams. That'll be his first of the whole game. 
as a coach and the time that you have in these pause plays or timeouts, what are you saying to try and keep your guys' head in the game or keep them calm? Because this can be such a stressful moment. Well, I, I think you just got to – you try to get your kids just to play every possession. And then the other big thing I think most coaches are going to talk to their kids about is just go on to the next play. And, and that, that simply means whether it's a turnover or even if it's a great play that you get a basket, you just got to go to the next play and play the next play. Um, and I think that's what both teams have done pretty well tonight. I mean, that was an outstanding move by uh, Keegan Nup. Keegan Nup. And him and Brown have both shown their ability when they get to the lane that they can finish. Barry Adams ends his drought. I mean, one of the first times he just really caught the ball on the low block and just been able to go one-on-one. -on -one. Into the corner, Dylan Joy for three. Gives Joy seven. I mean, Westville North trying to do a little bit of trapping there, but Orange doing a great job. Barry Adams with a two-handed jam. So the last two possessions, Amari's come alive. Uh, so Westerville North just continue to hang on right here. 5.23 to go, five-point ball game. Orange basketball coming out of bounds out of this timeout. I'd like to take an opportunity to thank all of our sponsors for allowing us to be live and free, present all of these fantastic and intense basketball games to you. BS Media Productions, Crown, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Douglas Property Services. If you, your company, or your organization would be interested in sponsoring a broadcast, please call or text Brian Skronsky at 970-629-0006. So it seems like a battle of momentum where one side and it's mostly been the pioneers tonight will pull away a little bit yep. we see the momentum come back but, and you know it's still consistency right but, but that's why these two teams are have shown that they're really good teams to start the season because you know they they don't they don't let uh, you know a a bad possession turn into three or four bad possessions in a row and i think as we just mentioned earlier you know the ability to go to the next play both both teams have shown the ability that they can do that Kind of that short-term memory, right? Yep, you got to have it. Corner three, clanks out. Rebound by Levi Davis, the putback Davis, only six foot. And that's an area where Orange has hurt Westerville North a lot tonight, is on that offensive glass and taking advantage of it. Now the putback, Robinson can't get it to go. Brown finds an outlet, but it's stolen. Ty Perkins picks it up. We'll see where they call the foul. Likely on Orange, I would think. Yeah, it is on Orange. So North will take the ball out of bounds. Three guys in double digits for the Pioneers tonight. Robinson, the pump fake, the drive. I mean, again, Orange just, you know, they're, they're, they're given a little bit of space and just trying to make sure they keep the ball out of the lane. Ty Perkins, the hesitation. Barry Adams tries for the putback, but no luck. North able to get an offensive rebound, but just not able to put get a put back and finish that play. I mean, Devin Brown just kind of clearing people out, getting a high ball screen here, but again operating from that spot at the top of the key. Ooh, they call it travel on mm -hmm. Keegan Nup. 
And that kind of seems to be the go-to for Orange. When they need something, they're just going to kind of get Devin Brown isolated at the top of the key and just let him make a decision with the basketball, which usually he makes a pretty good decision. Cut inside, works the baseline back to the top of the key. And again, travel. Now another travel called, this one against Tyson Perkins. Timeout called. So Coach Kalo taking a timeout here. So you're up seven with 3.37 to go. So you're kind of in a situation now um, that you, you, want, you, you don't want to take any rush shots. Uh, you want to you want to be patient, um, and you're also looking at a situation that you're going to tell them, you know, that Westerville North is going to have to be probably even more aggressive than they typically are. So you're going to have to be really strong with the basketball, and our goal is going to kind of be, hey, we want to get a really good shot, like a layup or a wide open three, or let's make sure we're really strong with the basketball and see if we can get to the bonus here in the next minute and a half. So then, I, then I think on the other side, if you're Westerville North, you're saying, hey, man, we're, we're going to have to make something happen now. We're down seven with 337. We're going to have to create a couple turnovers here. Uh, so our pressure's got to get amped up just a little bit more. So with that, when you're trying to look for those good shots, obviously you know that pressure's coming and potentially even traps as they're trying to force turnovers to get those yeah. extra possessions. Where do you find that balance between not taking rush shots but also taking good shots? Well, you, you, hope, you hope you can rely on the experience of your team. And, and when you've got a guy like Devin Brown that's 6'8", uh, can play inside, can play outside, can handle the basketball, and he's going to be a really tough guy to trap because he can see over all the traps. So I think the ball is probably going to be in his hands a lot here in the last three minutes of the basketball game. A cut inside, Young. Easy left hand. So right now you're Westville North, three minutes to go. You just need to get a stop. You don't have to do anything, anything stupid here. You just got to get a stop. Pass to and they got to stop. Good, Barry Adams the rebound. So some much needed extra possessions for the Warriors, trying to make the most of them, but Tyson Perkins rolls it off the rim on the left hand, no good. The pressure's there from Tyson Perkins as the Pioneers look to make the ball up court quickly. And, and now I think they're just they're just gonna they're gonna get some movement and be patient with the basketball. But but you're probably gonna see the ball get in Devin Brown's hands, and he's gonna kind of be a decision maker for him. Yep, call to travel. Travel call. The third or fourth one we've seen this quarter. Yeah, you know, and the thing that North has done here in the second half, they forced nine turnovers so far, where they only forced three in the first half. But but I don't think those turnovers have led to baskets. And you know, I think for North to be successful, that's what they got to be able to do is is create turnovers that are going to lead to some easy baskets. Foul. Reach maybe from behind. Pioneers with four team fouls. So, so now, you know, if you're north, you want to be aggressive going to the basket because next foul, whether you're in the act of shooting or not, you're shooting two free throws. So, so right now I'm not settling. I'm going right to the to the lane, and right there is exactly what exactly what Coach Trusley wants. And I believe it was just this year that they did away with the one and one. Is yes. That so, so the, the the new rule is 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 on the fifth foul of each quarter, a team's going to go to the free throw line and shoot two free throws. So there's no one and one, and at the end of each quarter, that those fouls are cleared. Both teams go back to zero. Okay. So it takes a little bit of pressure off, guys, because it's it's a lot different shooting a one-on-one -on -one than it is two free throws. And I had read, and I'm not well versed in free throw rules or anything like that, but I had read that it part of it was potentially to reduce injury, and that <laughs> after the one-on-one -on -one that people come together. Do you think there's any validity to that? No, I think it was it was 
it was really th this rule kind of came out of nowhere from the National Federation. Uh, I think the OHSA was surprised by it. Our coaches association was surprised by it because I don't think there were a lot of injuries created on free throw situations. So, um, you know, it is what it is, and it's going to kind of see interesting how it plays out here. I mean, just Westerville North here just continue to be aggressive. It's it's going to be tough to hit, you know to hold the basketball here, you know, for a minute thirty. So you're just trying to force them into something difficult. Good job working the ball around. No. Uh, offensive Can't rebound. Make a layup. Pass into the corner. They call a charge against Creighton Schroeder. The bench is irate. Yep, Coach Kale not, not real happy with the call at all. Still discussion being had. But but you know that's that's a difficulty we talked about. Is you know you mentioned that where do you draw that line about patience and being able to you know to score and, and the thing was. Westerville North was pretty patient defensively and been able to force to force to force you know them into a turnover, but now they come right back down and turn it over. And that was an obvious travel there. Some of those earlier were maybe, you know, lifted his pivot foot a half second too early, but that one was a very obvious travel. A timeout is called. So so now you, you know your coach Kalo, you're minute 14, you're up three. Um but the difficulty of being able to kind of hold the basketball is that Westville North only has one team foul. So Westville North is going to be really, really, really aggressive. Um, and, you know, you've watched a lot of basketball as I have. Typically in the last minute or so, some fouls that might, might be called early in the game just don't happen. So the big emphasis Coach Kalo's got to have right now is, hey, man, we got to just be strong with the basketball. We got to have two hands on the basketball. If we pick it up, you know, if we get trapped, we got to rescue it. But, you know, if we got a layup, we're, we're, we're going to take that. Um, if you're Westville North, you know, you're, their staff's telling their team, you know, we only got one team foul, so we can be really, really, really aggressive. And we just got to make a play here. We're only down three, just make a play um, and then see what happens. So you can expect West Virginia is going to pick up pressure here in the full court. Um, probably try to speed them up a little bit, see if they get get a trap, get a turnover, make something happen here. Now Orange takes it out. Looking for an option. Yep. Finds Brown. The press is there. At about five seconds, they're flying across half court. Now they finally collect it. Inside of a minute. And a foul is called. Ty Perkins, his first team foul. Another foul. There's that aggression you were yeah. talking about. And right, and right now with 48 seconds, you're going to have to really be aggressive and almost foul because you're going to get put in a situation here that you're going to have to force Orange to go to the free throw line and make free throws to win this basketball game. So right now, try to de try to deny it. Um, if, see if you can force Orange into something that they don't want to do. But you know, you're going to have to start looking here to foul. Ooh, almost had a charge. Flying through that lane. You know, that's one of the things you don't want to do now is, as an offensive player, you don't want to drive and leave your feet. Um, you, you, want to, you want to stay on balance. Uh, don't jump in the air to make a pass. 
because um, you don't want to you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're going to get in a charge. And I'm I'm sure it's not lost on these players how big this possession here is. Yeah. I mean, if they're able to get a turnover, it's a one possession game. But if you know he picks up one or two of these, now it's two possessions, and we're looking at a very different strategy going into the last 30 seconds. Yeah, and you got your you got the player you want at the free throw line right now, Devin Brown. Brown misses the first. And you're and if you're Westville North here, make or miss. You 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 don't have to worry about getting a three. You just want to attack the basket and see if you can get something quick. So Brown makes the second, extends the lead to four inside of 30 seconds. The three from Perkins. Hit the wire. Out, hits the strap. And a dead ball. And now, now you got a face guard. See if you can force a turnover right away. If not, you're going to have to foul right away. The pressure is on. A timeout called by Orange. Look at the points scored this quarter. Well competitive all night long. I'm going to anticipate on this this uh, baseline out of bound or baseline going full court that somehow Devin Brown's going to come to get the basketball because uh, one he's a big target um, you can throw the ball up to him and it's going to be tough for somebody to step in and take it away from him and plus I'm assuming he's going to be a guy that you'd really like to have at the free throw line so and I think you just generally feel safe with the ball in Devin Brown's yes. hands. You know yeah. he's not going to turn it over. The pressure yeah. isn't going to affect him as much as maybe like and a it's, lower and, and it's so hard to trap him because, you know, Westerville North, they, they don't have 6'8 guards. So, um, you, you know, he can see over everything. And, and, and if Devin does get trapped, you just got to make sure, his teammates just got to make sure that they're going to come to the basketball, catch the butt basketball with two hands. You're not worried about catching it, dribbling it. You're just worried about catching the ball because you know you're going to get fouled. So uh, just be strong with the basketball and don't turn it over. 18.6 seconds left in this game. Pioneer is a lead by four. The home team, Westerville North Warriors, looking for some light. Appears to be a sellout crowd. This gym is packed. And a quick foul. As you said, Devin Brown got it right away. Yeah. I mean, Westerville North did a really good job of, of uh, denying it. They, they probably had close to a four count. Um, but as you said, the guy that was going to probably come back and get the basketball was Devin Brown, and that's who it was. So he's got a chance here to, to, to make it a, uh, a six-point basketball game. Short on the first one. So again, if you're Westerville North, make or miss. You don't need a three, you just, you're just gonna need a quick score here. Seven. Whether that's an open three or a layup. Makes a second, and 17 and a half seconds, that's not a ton of time, but it is a no. lot of basketball time. Yeah, but, but, but you need to get a shot time. here quick. Tyson Perkins. Wow, what a move. It. For two, and another timeout. Yep. Warriors back within three. Inside of 10 seconds. Well, you know, right right now, if you're Westville North, you, you, you've got to try to get a steal on this inbounds plat pass. Um, you're, you're going to try to face guard. You're going to try to switch all screens. Uh, but the difficulty, again, is that mismatch with Devin Brown is his size. Um, they just don't really have anybody that can defend that because uh, uh, you put a big guy on him, he's just going to be able to beat you in the basketball. And you put a small guy on him, uh, you know, he's, he's just going to be big and they're going to throw it up and he's going to catch it. So uh, put a lot of pressure on the inbounds, maybe get a deflection off the inbounds and see if we can make a play here. Important thing for 
for Orange is you want to have guys coming to the basketball. They they can't be running away from it, especially your best free throw shooters. Have got to be guys that want to get the basketball in their hands um, and, and want to catch the ball. So no, def no defender on the ball. Um, Ty Perkins is going to kind of play center field here, looking for anybody cutting. They do get it in. Levi oh. Davis gets fouled. Levi Davis goes to the line for two. 6.5 seconds left in the game. And do you think that a two-possession game at this point makes it unmanageable for the Warriors? No. I, I mean, no. I mean, you, you hope he's, he's going to miss it. I'm not sure what the timeout situation is, though. But, but uh, he's gone to the free throw line here with two. Point game, and this 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 could probably seal it. Well, it might be sealed right now. Makes it a five-point game. So three seconds left. A quick three rolls out. Devin Brown collects it, and that's the game. Olin Tangi Orange stays undefeated as they pick up the victory over the Westerville North Warriors, 59 to 54. You watched it here on the OH Report. Stay tuned with us. We'll have the post-game show and your MVP. Santa Claus is coming to Crown. You better watch out. It's the year-end big event at Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Dublin. During the wrap-up the year sales event, get a new Ram 1500 up to 15,000 off MSRP. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Crown's year-end big event is here for a limited time. Santa Claus is coming <laughs> to Crown.
Bryce Coder, Joe Balo with the OH Report for the post-game show. Big victory tonight goes to Olin Tangy Orange as they move to 7-0 on the season, 3-0 in the conference. Westerville North moving to 6-2, 3-2 in the conference. A 59-54 total score in this game. Battle for control of the OCC. Let's take a look at those stats. 19 two-pointers, three three-pointers, 29 rebounds, 12 turnovers, 11 fouls, and 12 free throws for the Pioneers. 18 field goals, five three-pointers, 19 rebounds, nine turnovers, 14 total fouls, and three free throws. So, you know, very competitive game throughout. What do you think made that difference tonight for the Pioneers to come home with that victory? Well, I think one of the things I mentioned at the beginning towards maybe in the first quarter was in big games like this, many times if you take a look at final stats, you take a look at who won the rebounding battle. Um, Orange won that 29 to 19. And then you look, you take a look at who won the free throw, getting to the free throw line. Orange goes 12 of 20 from the free throw line. Uh, Westerville North goes three of six. Um, so I think that's, that's a big difference. You know, Westerville North forced 12 turnovers. But I think the thing that, that we saw tonight was Orange did not allow those turnovers to turn into easy baskets by Westerville North. So um, give a lot of credit to West, excuse me, to Owen Tangy Orange, uh, their ability to rebound the basketball. And I, th I think one of the big things that hurt uh, Westerville in the second half was they forced Devin Brown into a couple tough shots, but when he missed those shots, they didn't finish the possession by rebounding the basketball. So those offensive rebounds by uh, the Pioneers in that second half even though maybe they didn't get putbacks and scores on them, uh, it just made Westerville North have to play another possession of defense, which is really difficult when you're playing really good teams. And, I mean, it's a two-possession game. Teams only separated by five points. It really boils down to maybe those one or yep. two possessions yep. making that count, as we saw tonight. Yeah. And, and you know, these, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, for both teams, this is a great, great, experience to have early in the season it, it uh you know it wasn't a game in in their in their division um but it but it was kind of one of those games that you're going to anticipate in tournament uh, a game that's highly contested and then i think the, the lesson that you mentioned earlier that you go back to your kids if you're westerville north coaching staff you're going to go we got to understand the importance of of each possession uh, because when you get to that tournament time here in a couple months um, many of those games, that's what it comes down to, is is a play and a possession uh, that you make. Um, so, you know, Westerville North is going to learn a lot from this, um, and it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams continue to progress. But I can probably anticipate this might be a district matchup sometime here at the end of February or the first part of March. But I really like what you said about making every single possession count. I remember when I was playing and I missed a game-winning shot, and of course I'm upset, and my coach saying, yeah, you missed that shot, but someone else may missed a yeah, shot in the second yeah, quarter or yeah. the third quarter, or someone missed their free throws, right? And it really does boil down to making the most of every single opportunity, not yeah. just the opportunities at the end. Yeah, and that's, you know, when, when, when you're a casual fan, you look at, you know, if they didn't make that play, but, but there could be the same play that happened in the first quarter that the exact same thing happened that really means as much as that last last possession so um, these are both these are both experienced basketball teams though um, so so they're going to grow from this um, you know they'll, they'll probably get a little bit of time off maybe they'll probably practice here in the next couple days maybe get a day off on new year's day um, but then the grind of the season starts to happen in january where you know you're 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 playing in your division uh, you're playing a team, you know, you're going to play teams for the second time. Um, the weather's going to going to play some havoc. You're probably going to have some sickness, maybe some injuries. And it just gets to be that grind. So it's going to be the teams that, are, that embrace that grind. They're going to be the teams that are going to come out on top. <coughs> Great. So we will wrap up the post-game show there. Stay tuned with us. We will have the MVP of the game, Devin Brown, on the MVP player of the game interview. Stay tuned. Santa Claus is coming to crown. You better watch.
watch out. It's the year-end big event at Crown Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Dublin. During the wrap-up the year sales event, get a new Ram 1500 up to 15000 off MSRP. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Crown's year-end big event is here for a limited time. Santa Claus is coming <laughs> to Crown.
Bryce Carter with the OH Report here with the OH Report MVP player of the game. It's none other than Devin Brown. Devin Brown tonight, 17 points, a flurry of three-pointers as well. Also showed yourself on the interior. Congratulations tonight. Thank you, thank you. So, you know, obviously a huge game. You've pretty much trounced everyone you face so far this season, but you knew that this was going to be a tough, competitive, intense game. What's that message coming from Coach in the lead-up, maybe the week or the week or two coming into this game? Uh, I feel like online, online there was a lot of talk going around Columbus that we hadn't had a strong schedule, so we were kind of like frauds, I guess. So we knew coming out here, we weren't expected to really win this game, even though we were kind of, it knew it was a big game, but I feel like we had something to prove tonight. And you personally, what are you doing? I mean, like, you know, you're a great basketball player, but you're also a human being, right? Yeah. You can feel anxious, you <laughs> yeah. can feel nervous. What are you doing in the lead up to kind of keep yourself in check? Uh, just kind of trying to lead my boys to, you know, the right mindset and uh, get my boys ready. Um, obviously, uh, this is a huge game. There was nerves everywhere, but I felt like we came out tonight. We started slow, but we picked it up. You absolutely did so. You know, during the game, it was going back and forth where you'd establish yourself a little bit, leading as much as by 10 at some points, yep. and then they'd fight back into it. They'd uh -huh. continue to fight over and over. How do you, you know, kind of stick with that gifted, quick team laid into that game? Um, so we knew coming in that they made massive runs. That's how they win most of their games. They went take massive runs, 14-0 runs against Westville South in the third quarter. Um, so we knew... Our coach always praises defense resilience. They're going to make tough shots, but you just got to keep on making them take those tough shots, and eventually that's how you get stops. Amazing. Anyone you want to shout out tonight? Uh, I want to shout out my boy Dylan Joy. He wasn't making nothing in the first quarter. He came in the second half and showed out. One last thing for you, Devin. New year, new me, right? That's what they always yeah. say. At the OH Report, we believe in new uh, new year, new food. Yep. So the folks over at Brassica Upper Arlington actually teamed up with us. They want to give you a $20 gift card to Brassica and North Star. Oh. Any of the locations Thank there, you. you can use it any time. Congratulations, Devin Brown, our MVP player of the game. Thank you. We'd like to thank everyone for allowing us to be live and free. I'd like to thank everyone for being part of the team tonight. I'd like to thank Joe Balo on color commentary, legendary Central Ohio coach, as well as Colin Crisp on the cameras tonight, our ever faithful camera operator. I'd like to say thank you for watching at home. If you would like to sponsor the OH Report, contact Brian Skaronski at 970-629-0006 and be a part of the OH Report family. That's all from us tonight. Have a happy new year and have a great rest of your night.